welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Michaela, and if you are not new here, then welcome back. So most of you guys may know, but for some of you that are just like tuning in and you don't know, my husband and I, we are a military family. My husband is active duty, and we recently got stationed back in Hawaii. This is our second time being sent back here, and so since moving back here and posting a couple of videos and just like kind of openly sharing our experience of moving here, which pause, I'm so sorry if you guys can hear flies flying around the mic and whatnot. Since moving back to Hawaii, I forgot how bad the bug problem is and the flies and it's driving me crazy. Like we really need to go with some fly traps because they're everywhere and I clean every day, but somehow they just like appear. So I'm sorry if you can hear like buzzing randomly. Hopefully you can't. That's like so annoying. I mean, you might see them like fly across the screen. How embarrassing. Anyways, since moving back here, I've actually had a lot of people reach out to me on Instagram. They've commented here on YouTube and just kind of asked, you know, what is the process of moving? You know, my husband and I are going to be moving or my family and I, are, you know, we're going to be PCSing soon and I have no idea what to do or where to start. And a lot of people just kind of wanted to know like our process of how we got here and how we got here with the military. So I'm gonna share with you guys kind of like how we did it. I have a list here because it's, it's a, it's a process. So I wrote everything down. So hopefully I didn't forget anything. If I did forget something or you guys have a question and I didn't happen to mention it, feel free to comment down below on this video or if you wanna find me on Instagram and message me there, you totally can. Also, I don't know if it's the same for every military branch. My husband is in the army. So I am gonna be basing this video off of what the army does as well as the fact that we don't have any children of our own yet. And so this is just my husband and I and our dog. So I'm gonna be sharing that from you know that perspective. For the most part, everything is the same. There is probably more steps when you do have children that I just don't know. So hopefully I can help you with something though, if you're watching this video. So anyways, let's get started. So first things first, obviously you're gonna get sent to a duty station. Now, when you go to a duty station, generally you have two options. You're either gonna get sent there or you can pick. Fortunately, my husband and I, we were able to pick this duty station because my husband was up for re-enlistment. So he saw what was available and he's like, hey, I'm re-enlisting for Hawaii. So we were able to pick the first time we were sent here. So it really just depends on your contract. So the second thing, and this is kind of like with the help of my husband too, because I'm like, what did you do after like you found out we were coming here? You know, because there's things that like he needs to do that it's like, I can't do, I'm not in the military. So basically he said that once we are told like our duty station and whatnot, he goes through what's called a levy brief. And from what he said, they basically just like, it's just like a class where you go through and they tell you kind of how to clear housing, everything that you're gonna need to do to clear post or base before you leave and kind of help you know, give you the steps of what you need to do in order to get here. So your spouse, significant other that is active will go through a levy brief process and kind of figure out everything that they need to do. And that'll kind of help give you like a list of all the things you need to do as well. The next thing is they're gonna get orders. Now, sometimes they'll get like soft orders or hard orders. I honestly don't know the difference. Like I have been in this life for going on almost eight years. And you think I know like exactly what I'm talking about and I really don't, but your spouse is gonna get orders. Usually when they get them, you will not be on them, but do not panic, you will get on them. So when you get orders to Hawaii, basically Hawaii um, is considered, or I think Alaska too, is considered on CONUS, I think is the right term. And basically that just means you're not on like the mainland of the USA. It's kind of grouped in with overseas or like other countries. So it's a little bit of a different process. And when you do do that, uh, your family will need to go through what's called an EFM EFMP process, and that's so that they can get on the orders. And basically EFMP process, it means exceptional family member program. And basically you'll go to the hospital, you, your spouse should give you forms to take there, or they'll give you forms, and you'll have an interview with a doctor, and it's it's to make sure that if you have any like health conditions or your children might have like special needs and they need to see certain physicians or specialty doctors that where you're going, they will have that available for you. And then once that's signed off, you go back, you pick up the forms and then you'll take that back to your service member. They'll get their orders amended and then you will get put on the orders. And then that's when you can start like booking everything because your whole family will be on the orders and it just makes the process a lot easier. <laughs> I have two flies that are fighting behind this camera right now. So the next thing that we did is we went and got our plane tickets. So your spouse, you can go with them if you'd like. I went with my husband, but I wasn't even able to go in the room. So it's kind of pointless for me to go, but they go to the travel office and they will get their plane tickets. And that's kind of when you figure out 
your report date. So generally they'll have like a certain report date. So when we came, it was from like April 1st through the 20th. So we could pick our plane ticket pretty much anytime within that range. It's kind of tricky because we have a pet. So it was really important for us to pick an airline that was gonna suit our animal. And that's a, a huge tip. If you have any pets flying with you, make sure that you pick an airline that they can go on. And so for us, I did a lot of research before we went and got our tickets to see what would be best to fly our dog on and which airport would be best to fly out of because we were at Fort Hood. We were right in Central Texas. So we had the option of flying out of Austin or Dallas. And in the past we had flown out of Dallas, but we didn't have him before. So for me, it was a big deal to find a flight that was just gonna be easiest for him. And for us, that was Hawaiian Airlines because Hawaiian Airlines was the only airlines that flew out of Texas as a direct flight to Hawaii. Every other airline at every other airport had connecting flights, which we could have gone on a couple other airlines, but they would have been longer for him. It would have been cheaper, but it would have been longer. And so we were like, let's just do Hawaiian. It's a straight shoot. We don't gotta worry about like, him not getting on the airplane or something like I had a whole like freak out episode over that if you watch any of my past videos You will see the panic I had so pick your airline and when you go into travel Sometimes like it just depends on who you're working with because the lady that we my husband was working with to get the plane tickets She immediately told my husband no you can't book with Hawaiian because it's kind of confusing There's so many different elements But a lot of times like if you talk to the travel office or you call Sato They'll tell you that the military is only contract with Delta or like these certain airlines and they kind of are a little picky with you but you have to explain to them like no like I, I can book this flight and kind of almost you gotta like push them a little bit and the lady wasn't wanting to originally book our flights with Hawaiian because they didn't offer checked baggage for pets which is generally an option that you can do for airlines and so she was like oh no you like we're not going to get your flight for you because they don't do checked pets and luckily because I am a psychopath and I do my research I was, I was actually like yes you can but it's going to be as cargo it's just more expensive same thing it's under the plane it's just you know a different route to get onto the airplane but yes they do and my husband had to explain that to her and she was kind of like, mm, I don't know if that's actually gonna work, but she booked her ticket and then we contacted Hawaii and got him all squared away and came back with the actual itinerary and everything. And she was very surprised. So make sure you do your research, talk to the airlines and whatnot, figure out what is best for you and your pets and look at like all the different flight schedules and just try and work with the travel agents. And if you really want a specific flight, like don't be afraid to push back on it because they're kind of just required to give you like what is easiest and what is cheapest for them, regardless of your situation. So be very adamant on what flight you want. Yeah, we were told originally, no, we can't fly Hawaiian. And I was like, oh yes, we can. Also, as soon as you, and this kind of just like coincides, but as soon as you get your plane tickets, depending on the airline, make sure that you schedule your pets right away. Every airline is different. Another reason why we chose Hawaiian, which I'm going to do a separate video on how we got our dog here and the whole process of that, but we also chose Hawaiian because we were able to book him on our flight as soon as we booked our tickets that day, where some airlines you can only book like 10 days out and I just did not want to deal with the stress of any of that. I wanted to make sure our dog was going to be, you know, underneath us on the plane with us. And so that's another reason why we went with Hawaiian. Like I said, make sure that as soon as you get your tickets, you contact the airline and figure out what their policy is as far as like booking pets. Unless you're using like an, a shipping company for pets, that's also another option. We did that when we were leaving Hawaii. So there's tons of options. And like I said, I'll make a separate video talking about all that in the future. So once you figure out when you're going to be leaving the States or going to your next duty station, you want to get on housing wait list if you're planning on living on base or on post. Sometimes depending on the time of year that you're gonna be PCSing, it can be really busy, especially like spring, summertime. That's generally when most people PCS. So the earlier you can get on the wait list, the better. Some branches of the military, they don't put you active on the list until you arrive, but with the army, you can get on like the wait list and be active. And then the sooner you get here, you get bumped up and whatnot. It also depends on the style of home you're needing or how many homes it, or how many like bedrooms that you need. With us, just being my husband and I, we got our house fairly quickly. I want to say like within a couple weeks of arriving. We didn't move into our house though. Like we signed for the papers, but we didn't move into our house for probably like a month or a little over a month because we didn't get our HHG, which is our household goods, which I'll talk about here in a second until, you know, a little over a month. And so with the army, I'm so thankful we have this option where we can continue to stay in our hotel 
until our household goods arrive and we don't have to live in an empty house. You can and you can get loaner furniture, but then you won't keep getting TLA, which is the money that you get to stay in the hotel. So you have those two options. We chose to just stay in the hotel for convenience and also like be aware of where your spouse is gonna be stationed so that you're not like on an opposite end of the island and they're working in town and then they gotta deal with traffic and all that. So there's a lot of things to consider. So also make sure you reach research like the island and whatnot too. So after we got on housing wait list, which you will need orders and whatnot to do, um, we scheduled our HHG, which HHG means household goods. And that's like where they set up the moving company to come and pick up all of your stuff. And so you can kind of decide when you want them to pick it up. Some people have them pick it up like a month in advance so that by the time they get to their next duty station, it'll already like be there waiting for them. Some people, these flies are flying like all over in front of my face right now. Anyway, so you want to decide on when you're going to have your household goods picked up and that will determine like when it's going to arrive. We had ours picked up, I want to say a week before we left. So once you schedule your HHG and this, like none of this has to be in like specific order. You can do certain things like before other things, depending on like your guys' personal schedule and what you need to take care of and do. But the next thing that we did was we scheduled to have our vehicle dropped off at the VPC center in the VPC center, the VP center in Dallas. And that's the vehicle processing center. And in case you guys didn't know, the military will pay for one vehicle to be shipped to your next duty station. And so I think you can just go on the website. It's like vehicle processing center. You pick the location, you pick your date. It'll tell you like everything. They'll send you an email or something of everything that you need to do, clean your car. You have to have like less than one fourth tank of gas. There can be like no significant like damages on your car, that kind of thing. And then you pretty much just go drop it off. Your spouse will bring orders and all the paperwork there. I don't know if I said this in the beginning, but make sure your spouse who's active duty and has their orders makes tons and tons of copies of their orders, the ones that are amended with your family on it, because they will need to be like giving those orders out like hotcakes to like, cause everybody's gonna want them. So make sure they make tons and tons of copies. For at least moving to Hawaii, we scheduled ours about five weeks out. You'll wanna schedule it about four to five weeks out. And that's if you don't wanna worry about having to get a rental when you get here because ours arrived literally like, ours arrived actually a week before we got here. So it was ready for pickup the day after we landed. So we didn't have to do a rental car when we arrived here at all. Also another tip is if you have multiple vehicles and you're able to, I would recommend shipping the heaviest vehicle because you will be paying. If you choose to ship your other vehicle here, you will be paying for that one out of pocket. And it also depends on the weight is a big factor as well. So we had the military ship our SUV and then we paid out of pocket for our smaller vehicle, which leads me to my next thing. We decided to ship our second vehicle. And so we had to go through a company because we weren't anywhere near a port to drop our car off. And so for us, we used Four Corners Shipping and they're pretty much like a third, they're, they're not a third party, but they're a company that like contacts third party car shipment companies to come pick up the car. We contacted them, got the coat and everything. And then they had a company come drive to us, pick up our car, probably like, a week or so before we left Texas and then they drove it to LA to the port and had it shipped over and we got that. Oh my gosh, when did we pick that car up? We picked up that car maybe like a week after. No, no, no. We picked up that car like a week before we moved into this house, which was nice because then we were just able to, we like, we ha we already had our house. We weren't living in the house yet. So we were able to just keep it in the garage and not have to pay for extra parking at the hotel. Another thing as well is make sure that you pick out a hotel that you're gonna be staying at once you arrive on island. It depends on what branch you're gonna be at. For us with the army, we can stay at any hotel we want. I think for other branches, you have to get like a letter for some reason of like, uh, like there's no availability at the on-base hotels if you wanna stay off-base or something like that. I don't know for sure, but that's what I've heard with Army, you no longer have to do that. So we were able to pick whatever hotel we wanted. We stayed at the Queen Kapiolani Hotel, which was, it was perfect for us at the time. It was very centralized. It was across the street from the beach, the zoo. It was it was just a really great hotel. The staff was really friendly and we just all around enjoyed it. I would recommend like if you're gonna be coming during peak PCS season that you do try to book that out as far as you can. And then when you do book it out, make sure that you book it as max as possible. So we booked ours out for 60 days in advance because we didn't know how long we were gonna be in a hotel for. And then you can always change that or like cancel the dates if you end up moving into your house soon or you just gotta give them like a 24 or 48 hour notice before you leave so that they can cancel everything. There's also lists. I don't know where you get them, but I believe like your command or your spouse should get a list of like all the 
TLA hotels because there's gonna be hotels on the island that you can stay at and there's gonna be certain ones that'll say like you can stay with a dog or you can't stay with a dog. You can stay with a dog as long as it's like less than 40 pounds or something like that. So um, you should get a list of all the hotels that you can stay at, but we really enjoyed staying at the Queen Kapiolani. Okay, I promise we're getting down to the bottom of the list. The next thing is by this time, hopefully you guys should be getting ready to have the moving companies come and pick up everything. So it would be a good time, like a week or two out, depending on how much stuff you have, to start getting your house ready for them to come and pick up everything. And so that means like taking stuff off the walls, kind of what we would do is I would like pull stuff out of the cabinets and kind of put them in a room and organize it. You wanna start putting stuff like that you wanna take with you, like personally in suitcases or totes into a separate room so that when they do come, they don't pack that up and just kind of getting everything ready and organized and kind of stacked in the piles that way. When they come, it's just a smoother process. Also make sure you take pictures of everything, pictures and videos. The company that we used was really nice. They had their own app. And so we were able to take pictures and videos of the whole entire house, turn on our TV, show them our furniture and everything and be like, this is working, pulling out drawers and whatnot so that they had evidence and we had evidence that everything was working. So, and if they don't have an app, still take pictures, still take videos. So that way if something does break, you can hopefully file a claim. Okay, here's another one, depending on if like when you ship your car, if you only have one car, if your car is not going to be available, by the time you guys arrive on an island, be sure to get a rental car set up. I've heard that rental cars sell out here very fast, so make sure you do that in advance too. I'm not sure how far in advance we need to do that because our car was already here on island before we arrived, so we didn't even have to do that. We did have to rent a car before we left, which I will touch on here in a second. The last thing that I'm gonna say before I close out this video is make sure that you budget depending on where you're moving and make sure that you, you're putting money aside. Every family is gonna be different as far as you know what amount of money they need. So I'm not gonna say you need this amount of money because I just don't know your family and I don't know how much you guys spend, but make sure you're budgeting because the, uh, the army, the military, whatever, they will pay to move your things. They will pay to move your car, but there are certain things that they will not pay for, or you will have to pay for out of pocket and they will reimburse you. So for instance, I wrote a couple things down, a rental car, because we got our car picked up before we left, our second car picked up before we left. So we didn't have a car to get to Austin. So we ended up renting a minivan for a couple days so that we were able to, you know, take our stuff to the airport. And also because we had our dog, there was a shuttle at our hotel, which would have been great if we didn't have an animal, but they were unable to take us to the cargo facility at the airport where we need to drop off our dog. So we had to have a vehicle to take him there. And I wasn't gonna like rely on Uber at like four in the morning. So we just ended up renting a car. So we did have to pay for that out of pocket. Another thing is your, your tickets for your animal, the government or the military will not pay for that. So you will have to pay for that out of pocket. And depending on what airline you use, that does add up. And then also moving to Hawaii, you have to get like the Favin test, make sure their rabies are up to date, the certificate so that they can like enter the island, which like I said, I'll do a separate video on all of that. That will be out of pocket as well. I think the only thing that you can get reimbursed for with the military is if they stay in the quarantine facility. I'm not for sure on that one, but I, I think they will reimburse you on that part. Another thing is pet hotel fees. Like our, our pet fee for our hotel at Queen Copy Line is $200. So just make sure that you're pocketing like that extra money here and there. We were able to get our hotel reimbursed when we stayed in Austin before we left. We just copied, you know, kept the receipts and then turned that in and they were able to give us the money back for that. But that was originally out of pocket. And then once you get there, um, you'll fill out like these financial forms that you'll have to turn in every 10 days to the, your spouse will have to turn in. I don't know what the proper name is, but they'll have to go turn it into the office. And that way you can get your money so that you can pay for the hotel that you are staying at so yeah that's pretty much it i hope i covered everything on what to do hopefully this wasn't too jumbled up it's a lot of steps moving here but i feel like once we got here it was like oh that wasn't that bad if there's anything i did miss though and you guys have questions on feel free to ask me down in the comment section or you can find me on instagram i have that on my profile page and, and linked down below you guys can message me on there um if you have any questions of anything that i missed and like i said i'll be doing a couple more videos one on how to to get your dog here. I had someone ask me about what I packed in my suitcase that I brought with me personally while we were staying in the hotel, which I can do a video on that as well. So yeah, that is pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you're moving to Hawaii, 
soon. Congratulations. It is such a fun place to live. Some people love it. Some people hate it. I look at it as a once in a lifetime experience to say that you're pretty much living in Hawaii for free. So it's a cool experience and we love it here. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next one.